Okay, go to reinstability. So, uh, ACL and PCL test, unilateral, sorry, uh, planar test, unilateral test. We've got your anterior Jordan Lockman's, posterior sagging god freeze. Okay? Um, I normally start off with that because that, especially with the Lockman's, because that's where you actually feel something through your hand. The anterior Jordan, you're actually looking at how far uh, the tibia translates, and the posterior sagging god freeze, those are just observations. But whatever palpation skills you just picked up with the Lockman's, you're going to have to try to use those for these next few tests now. Okay? The next bunch deal with rotary instability. And these are what we, what typically people would call pivot shifts. Just realize pivot shifts aren't that great. Okay, there's three that are typically used, and out of all of them, those are the three best ones that I've chosen to give you guys. In McGee, there's a whole bunch. A lot of times, though, the reliability of these tests um, are determined uh, in surgery when people are under anesthetic. So these aren't the best tests to use on the field. Um, so rotary instability, there's posterior lateral, posterior medial, and anterior lateral, anterior medial. Uh, these next two slides just give you a heading of what type of instability, sorry, uh, what structures are in these corners. And so if you have what's called posterior lateral instability, these are the structures that are affected, posterior medial structures that are affected, and so on and so forth, with anterior, anterior lateral. I think at the end of the day, this is more just a memorization thing. Um, this is a picture out of McGee that kind of gives you an idea. That's the anterior medial, and those are the structures in the anterior medial. That's the posterior lateral, posterior medial, and so on. Okay. Um, I think it's probably best if you just uh, look at this at home um, and practice our hands-on stuff in lab, okay? So the first two are called Slocum's tests. You can use Slocum's for uh, anterior lateral or anterior medial, depending which way the tibia is facing. So just sit there and internally rotate your tibia. If you internally rotate your tibia, so internal rotation or tibia, okay? What comes forward, the medial or the lateral plateau? Medial, rotation. Lateral tibial plateau moves forward. If it moves forward excessively, that means you have anterior lateral rotary instability. The structures in the anterior lateral corner have been stretched. Does that make sense? And vice versa. If you go external rotation of your tibia, it's the opposite. Okay, so with the Slocum test, all you're doing is putting the leg in a position of, an, of lateral or uh, medial rotation and then in a simple drawer, which is what you guys already did. Okay. Um, so that's Slocum. These next two are a little bit complex. This one's called the lateral pivot shift. In some books, it's called the test of Macintosh. Um, the hip is in flexion, um, a little bit of flexion, abduction at 30 degrees, um, and then the knee is flexed to 10 and slightly internally rotated. So that's your starting position. This is the movement. Okay. Apply valgus, internal rotation by placing the heel of your palm behind the fibula, the fibular head and lateral gastroc. Okay. So when you do that, Okay, so fibular head, lateral gastrox. You put the heel of your hand on top of there. Okay, so remember the starting position. If it's flexed, knee is flexed slightly. Okay, when you put a valgus and internal rotation with your hand, you have just subluxed the knee. Okay, so the starting position, as soon as you apply these forces, technically you're, you've already subluxed the knee. As you bend, as you bend the knee into further flexion, so you're doing this, you're in subluxation. As you bend further, because of the structures and mechanisms that take place during the screwable mechanism, the knee will reduce. 
and you know it reduces when it clumps. So with these pivot shifts, what you're looking for is a clump. Okay, so sublux, flex, clump. It just reduced. And that tells you the initial starting position was so lax that these structures are most likely torn. Okay, so if I do this and this, and I don't sublux it, and I bend, it wasn't subluxed to begin with, so there won't be a clunk. The clunk indicates a positive. Positive indicates an anterior lateral rotary instability. Anterior lateral. Okay, remember with the slocums? We turn everything internally. That suggests that the lateral side has been stretched. You can accentuate that by applying your valgus and internal rotation at the fibular head. Okay. Once you apply those forces in a slightly flexed position, you've already subluxed the knee, assuming things are fine. And then as you flex, it'll clunk back in. Does that make sense? So with this one, you start from here, clunk, clunk. Sublux, reduce. I need a ball. Sublux, reduce. Okay. Now the only way this works is if the ITV is intact. Because remember what happens, remember the orientation ITV? Once you flex, it sits behind the joint line and it becomes a new flexor. So the, one of the reasons why it reduces is because the ITV pulls it back into place. If the ITV is torn as well, you won't get the clock. There'll be gross laxity. Okay. So that's the first one. Let's try that first because that's a combination of movements and that's a little bit complex. So let's do the first three. Let's do slocums with anterior, sorry, internal and external rotation. So just a drawer. You can use your elbows or sit on the foot. Do slocums in two different positions for the tibia. And then try this one. Ten minutes. If you are done, grab another knee on another person. Try your slogans and try Macintosh.
push up. And then, like this. Yeah, a little bit like this. Yeah, Yeah, they, that's what they showed. Oh, and killing the yogurt. Yeah, that was 
when it unstabilizes, and you should feel another clump when it reduces right at the very end. So you might feel two clumps. That's not comfortable. One clump is a and a one clunk is good enough to indicate that nothing is wrong. Okay. So you can take them to a full range, like deep knee flexion down to 30 and then reduce, or you can start off um, just before. Okay. And that again indicates uh, anterolateral reason. So it's essentially the same hand positions. Again, just make sure you're on the fibular head. If you're into the femoral condyle and you're too far, then you're not going to get the internal rotation and the valgus that you want. Okay, so again, palpation skills, find the fibular head and make sure the heel of your palm is around the fibular head. Um, that's kind of the position I typically use, the hand underneath the heel, and then the other hand right at the uh, fibular head. Okay. Um, I'll give you five minutes to practice this one and the one before, the Mac and Pop before. I think that one needs a little more practice. If you're comfortable, you can also try slow films and lock ins and answer your drawer again. Okay? So five minutes to try those again. Again, try different knees. Okay. 